Look at that slow, that slow swivel. <laughs> hey! What's going on, Scott? How you doing, Mike Zano? I went, I'm on beach week vacation times two, meaning we had one week, we extended it to another just because the opportunity presented itself. And so I didn't have my robe. I apologize. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a wee bit disappointed that you don't have the wee robe. Bit. I always wee have bit. my robe. I, mean, I never leave home without it. I feel like you did that just to show up your Star Wars shirt. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm a total geek with my Star Wars shirt, right? <laughs> hey, I have to say, you are so tan. Really? Really? Yeah, Thank I mean, I, I'm very impressed. And you know what? I I don't think that uh, a few years ago, without land investing, you would have been able to afford two weeks at the beach. No, no, I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't be able to take the time off the fight department. It's just, uh, hey, what can I say? This business changes everything, right? It's uh, and we're doing land deals for the beach. It's just. Uh, I shouldn't say we, that's a lie. My team, our team. Uh, but I always say what? Land investing is a team sport. You complete me section. Check it off. You complete me. You For those of you who are new to our show, we have a few segments. And one of them is you complete me. And sometimes it just kind of sneaks up on you. And that was it right there. Kind of came live. Scott, people are looking at us saying, okay, uh, Night Capital Land Geek guys, What's going on? Why are they here live on Facebook? Uh, can you tell them? What are we doing here? So the the reason we started the show, and we're on like, what, episode 199 now? Yeah, Netflix um, has already approached us. Uh, we're going into... Uh... <laughs> the, the reason we started the show is because uh, we felt that there just wasn't enough going on in the evening hours, but that's when a lot of people work. They burn the midnight oil. They're maybe having a cocktail at their computer, making money on the internet. And we thought, what better time to have a discussion and a drink about land investing, right? Right. So it's a way to reach out to those people who maybe are working during the day and are kicking back at home at night. And here we go, we're talking land investing. So we encourage everybody who's watching to send us your comments and questions. Uh, you know, it's an open forum. We, we generally try to have a topic. We try not to take ourselves too seriously, but we do a good job with that. Yeah, well, we do. You know, that's, and that's our, our community, the people we work with, right? I always tell people it's ethical, it's transparent. Um, you know, it's very refreshing when it comes to real estate. Like we, th this is just a very open process, but we take our business very serious ourselves. Not so much. Right. I mean, uh, and plus it's 10 30 on the East coast, nine 30 where Scott is. And some people, um, uh, it's even 7.30, right, on the uh, out in California and whatnot. So, um, but this is a, we bring a lot of fun and a lot of content, right? So we've had some great guests on here. Um, and what's so funny? What are you laughing at? A lot of fun. A lot of a fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, so, can we do a split? Are we split screen? Yeah, never mind. We're good. Sorry, I didn't know. No, I got you. I know the deal. I've had the complaint before, and I always go right to it. We're split screen. We're good. We don't so, want to like look like one of us is occupying more screen space than the other. You know, we don't want we want to be equal opportunity here. That's how it looks on my end. You're larger than life, and I'm just this little thing uh, up in the corner. <laughs> that's a, well, listen, tonight is all about numbers, and, and and I always say, you know, uh, I love numbers. I love math, and there's, you know, uh, I always say there's three kinds of mathematicians, right? Those who can add and those who can't. So <laughs> that's. I said that once at a at a, at a conference or, or at a at a training for the fighter pilot. And the lady was like, "What's the third kind?" And I'm like, "That's a joke." But it doesn't oh matter. My gosh, that's so. Funny. What numbers are we talking about tonight, Scott? We have a. I don't know if we actually threw them out there. Did we throw them out on a Facebook group that tonight was going to be a numbers type of? Uh, in, in... No, we didn't. We didn't. I mean, about 15 minutes ago, I I said to the community, "It's all about numbers tonight." So here we go. Well, our business is all about numbers, right? I mean, look at our, right from the get-go, this is not one of our topics, but let's, let's bring it out. Three to 5% acceptance rate, one to 2% closing rate. What's that mean? We are a numbers uh, business, right? You know, massive action, massive numbers brings massive deal flow. Uh, how, about, uh, how about mailings, Mike? Uh, hoping to buy one property for every 100 mailings. Yeah, right? and one 
people look and say, what are my fixed costs, right? When I start this business, what can I look at? And obviously one of them, I call it the lifeblood of what our business. It's the lifeline. It's the, it's the mailing. But one deal will make up for any mailing, right? One deal. It's, it's just how we do it. It's a volume game. Um, even if you get one deal out of every hundred mailings, you are going to, well, you know, more than pay for the mailing and also all the other expenses and make a nice profit. So it's definitely a numbers game, right? Uh, we, we need, and that's why we go to areas where there's lots of what? Volume, right? Lots of land. Yeah. We, we just had, a, we were doing a little webinar and it's a great, Great top, great topic to kind of segue into. Scott, I live in Massachusetts. I'm brand new to the business. I think I'm going to start with Boston. What do you think? Good idea? Yeah, probably not. I don't think you can get land for 25 cents on the dollar in Boston. But I know the area really well. I mean, this is my, I grew up here. Uh, I mean, I can go take the pitches. I mean, these other areas, I, I have to go visit them. How am I going to go see them, Scott? I, I can't even... I mean, it's so far away. Do I have to go there? You do not have to go there. You you never have to visit. Uh, you know, Mike, would you be happy with buying a, a piece of land in New Mexico for a hundred bucks and selling it for seven <laughs> fifty? I only do that about uh, how, many, how many hundred times? Yes, <laughs> I love that. And that's that's great. It brings another point. We're in a micro environment, right? All I love real estate in general is, is incredible, right? So we're definitely not here to talk down about any form of real estate. It's just ours is a very unique niche. Where can you buy land literally for $100 or less up to a few thousand, turn around and sell it uh, and make some passive income or make a quick cash flip? It's just we deal in a micro environment. It's a very unique model that we have. Yeah, that's for sure. And, you know, the startup costs are very low. I mean, you can start making a profit very quickly. You can scale it up very quickly. So, um, you know, I, I have a lot of lot of friends in uh, in in real estate investing. You know, buying duplexes and and renting them out, and uh, they're 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 doing well. Uh, I I see that as kind of a, a longer term, almost retirement plan. You know, these people are going to be doing very well in a few years, but uh, this is a profession where we can do very well very quickly. So. It's pretty awesome. Nice. Any initial questions? We got any viewers? It's just you and I chatting. Are people watching? No, we got some viewers. We got a number of viewers. My son Ben is watching. He's in the airport. Uh, ben, nice to see you, my friend. Is ben uh, the one that's been taking a little foothold in the business? Ben and Ethan, actually. Ben is my 13 year old, and Ethan is my 17 year old. They are taking a little foothold in the business this summer. So it's pretty awesome. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're excited. Um, Ethan, they both want to come to boot camp, so we'll we'll maybe consider that in the future. But we'll we'll nice. see what happens. But they're they're actually learning to uh, to um, scrub some lists and create some lists and that type of thing. So uh, I'm, I I thought we would maybe take them through the anatomy of an entire land deal. So right now we're we're starting with scrubbing the lists, and uh, next week we're going to get the mailings. And, Show, show them how we do that. Well, you know, what I love about that, Scott. I always talk about there's a local supermarket near where I live, and you know, they got a, there's a few of them. It's a decent sized chain. I'm sure there's some good, some some good, re, you know, return, some good, good good money made there by the family that runs these. But anybody that's going to take over this, uh, you know, the next generation, so to speak, they have to start pushing the carts, working in the cashier line, stocking in the produce. They they learn every functional aspect of that business. So then later on, they can be great managers, right? So what you're doing with your with your children and with the boys, perfect, right? You need to know every single aspect because Mark calls it the word I, he likes to use, abdicate, right? Rather than, you know, you just can't take something and delegate it right away. Like get it off your plate. You need to understand what it is, why you do it, what's the time involved, why, is it, you know, it, does it take five hours, 10 hours, two hours, 45 minutes? You need to know these things so that you can, when you delegate it or automate it, whatever it may be, you know what to expect. So. I think you're doing the exact, uh, you know, you're doing the right thing, and that's awesome. I mean, it, it's pretty exciting to see the excitement in their eyes when they talk about it. When they look at me and say, "Dad, you made how much money from this land deal? And how much work did you do? Just a couple hours. That's awesome. Yeah, it is really awesome. So to yeah. see the excitement in their eyes, and then also to know that." Um, you know, it, 
it takes training to learn to know what to do, but like, uh, I don't, I don't want to oversimplify it, but, but it's possible to teach your 13 year old how to do this. And, and that's, that's just the most phenomenal thing to me. I mean, if, if he walks away and my 17 year old walks away after the summer coming away with, uh, the, the notion of how to buy and sell a piece of property, uh, right. I, I mean, that's just phenomenal to me. So anyway, no, absolutely. So any questions there? I mean, you're the one that runs the, uh, I can't even yeah, see these I, comments. I it drives down, me crazy. I run something. Yes, I do. In, on your show. Um, here's my <laughs> show. Would you stop? Are we, did I say something I shouldn't have? Here we go. No, no, no. That was on episode two. You said, welcome to my show. No, I'm kidding. Uh, here's, a my question, island. here's a question from Con, Conway Churman. Uh, how, Conway. Thanks for coming. how about Florida? Is it already saturated with investors? All right. First off, no, we do a number of deals. We still do deals there all the time. And, uh, no, it's not. Sad. Florida actually is an area where there's a ton of subdivisions with a ton of land, and you can buy land down there cheaper than you think. So actually, Florida is a great area. And then he fo he has a follow up question. He's gearing up for a two thousand piece mailing next week. Good for you for taking massive action, by the way. Right. Uh, but I need to pick a county this weekend. I want to net maybe twenty thousand dollars or more by September. I need to pick Doable. the right. I need to pick the right target county. So I would say Conway. First of all, I use my toolkit because in the toolkit there's a more geeky tool section and a downloadable section. Mark has a secret county list. And a lot of people I've seen some talk on Facebook. Like, What's up with the secret county list? There's, there's no secrets. Well, in a way there is. It's actually in secret. You know, call it what you what you want to call it. This is an area where other land investors, such as Scott and myself, Mark Tate. Uh, Eric, uh, Mimi, all, we're all in these areas. This is where we are doing deals. And it may be counterintuitive to a lot of people coming to this business want to say, well, people are working there. Why do I want to go there? Because where we work, there's tons of land. It's an established market. So you need to go into the toolkit and you need to actually look into that section. Now, if you really want to deepen your understanding, right, you go to flight school. And here's lucky for you, Conway, if you're looking to bring back that kind of return by September, Flight school is something I think that would serve you well. Now, a lot of people have asked me over the years, and, and used to, Scott, and, and uh, what, well, if you have a toolkit, why do you have to have flight school? Why flight school? Why a toolkit? Well, the toolkit, do you need flight school? No, you don't need the flight school, but you should want the flight school. The flight school is something that exponentially, this is the way, right? Exponentially decreases the time it'll take you to increase your passive income. I'll say that a little slow. I, I love it. Very good. Exponentially decreases the time it takes you to increase your passive income. So what that means is that you're not going to make the mistakes that people make when they start on this business. What we have is a, a business model that works very well. It just, you have to get up and running. So there's a lot of initial mistakes. People make the paralysis by overanalysis. Work with Scott Todd. Work with a genius in this business who's going to take you from zero to 100 like that. And the investment that you would make on the land in, in the uh, – Flight school, it represents one or two land deals. So um, do yourself a favor, check into that if you don't know about it. But go ahead. What else we got, Scott? That's about it for now. So I think we should continue talking about numbers. It's all about, no, it's all about numbers tonight, right? Three sets of uh, three. I know we had three kind of uh, groupings. What's the first one, Scott? 80-20, Mike. Talk about 80-20 for me. Pareto's law, I think is what they call it. There's always a lot of talk about this out there, right? I think it started in my best estimation from what I've read is that, you know, somebody once basically talked about a farmer or somebody out there and he has all this, these crops, right? And he realized that, well, however he determined it, that 80% uh, of his yield came from 20% of his, of, of his seeds, right? So basically, you know, we all are doing a lot of work in our day-to-day -day life, right? If you look at your life, in, 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 in total, right? In whatever area you're in, whether it's, uh, um, it could be on the fire ground. 80% of our efforts, 20% oh, 20 of our efforts are going to bring about 80% of the results that are going to knock that fire down, right? So it's basically highlighting what is actually going to bring about the, the massive action, the massive results. Um, you know, it's, and I'll use firefighting as an example again, because I know my buddy Rob's on here, like, there's things that happen on the fire ground. It used to be when I first got on, people were like, just do something, get out there, right? We, 
we do a lot of things like we'll, we'll open up windows or break windows or cut holes in roofs to reduce the uh, smoke or the heat. But you don't want to just go ripping open every window because you want to go crazy. You want to be very targeted. You can actually slow down and take your time and be very decisive and use less, less effort to bring about bigger results. Now, in the land investing, it's the same thing, right? How would that work in our world, uh, Scott? So uh, I can put a whole bunch of effort out there or I can minimize my effort and bring about bigger results. So here's the thing, especially when you're first starting out, right? You have all of these tasks. You have 20 tasks that you want to accomplish. Okay. If you concentrate on the 20% of those tasks that are most important, they will result in more yield for you in the end. So we talk a lot about this, Mark, when you're, uh, Mike, when you're first, Mark, sorry. Mark. Well, you know how it is. Yeah, we talk a lot about this when, we, when you're first starting the business. Try not to get distracted, right? Try not right. to become paralyzed by over analysis. I think the the most important things to start with that in the 20%, right? That the 20% of your activities that are most important for you that will that will result in 80% of your yield is mailing and marketing, mailing and marketing. So many people get tied up in all the other stuff. Should I set up my LLC? Should I get my website up and running? Should I get you know, this, that, and the other thing going. It's just, it's just one of those things where if you focus your time on those 20%, on that 20%, you will experience greater yield in the long run. Yeah, I, I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. I mean, it, it's a matter of putting the focus where it belongs, right? Putting the effort where it belongs, putting, uh, putting it all in, perspective yeah. right so yeah. so um, make a like make a list right make a list and ask yourself is this is this action item in the top 20 percent of my list or is it in the lower 80 percent of my list make it in the you know what you're going to act what you're going to take action on today should be in the top 20 percent of your list right and you know when i first started out um you know, my first coach uh, through the land geek was Jeff Axon, and we talked about um, we talked about um, the whirlwind. The whirlwind is the eighty percent. So basically, mailing and marketing moves the needle, but there's all this other stuff that attracts our attention, right? That brings us, you know, it it, it brings us, you know, all this kind of thoughts. Of, okay, I'm gonna get my website going. This, that, the other thing. Mailing and marketing, right? That's the what twenty percent is. 80% we call whirlwind, that 80%, put it aside, focus on the 20%, focus on what's going to move the needle. So uh, it's true. Really, if you put, if you hyper-focus on that 20%, you're going to move the needle. And Mark talks about that all the time, right? There's only two things you can control, Mark says, mailing and marketing, but the rest you have to deal with, but that, that's where the systems and the automation, the delegation come in. Again, not right. to, I mean, uh, this is something that if you really want to word, learn, uh, and you want to learn very quickly and in a very efficient manner than flight school. Scott, when's the next flight school start? Start anyway. The next flight school for anybody watching starts next Wednesday night, July 18th at 9 p.m. Eastern. We still have spots available. If okay. you have been thinking about this business for a long time, if you are on the verge of making a leap of faith taking a leap of faith in your life because you need to change something like I did three years ago when I was 40 years old and hit kind of a midlife crisis and just thought I needed something different. Now is the time to take action. So July 18th, uh, Wednesday nights, nine Eastern with Scott Todd for 11 modules. He breaks down his business, his own business for you. He shows you how, to formulate your own land business. And, you know, this is a good analogy, Mike, because I think that the investor toolkit is awesome. Like we always talk about, there's no lack of intel in the investor toolkit, right? Right. But, but there are like 40 modules in there, right? That teach you all aspects of this business. A lot of content, yeah. A lot of content. So I think what maybe Scott Todd does with Fly School 
is he takes it down to that 20%. Like, what do you need to focus on? And he really, he really talks about what you need to be doing in order to move the needle forward right away. Yeah, no, it's very true. It's, um, it's, it's really, um, you're learning from the past mistakes that we've all made. You're learning something that's very streamlined, very efficient. Um, it's going to, you know, what's going to happen though with the flight school, it's effectively going to get you into the land investing very quickly. And, and, and that's the thing about our business. We talk about the efficiency, but you got to be effective first, right? You got to learn how to do what we do, learn the flow, learn the deal flow process, become very effective, but he'll give you all the keys to efficiency as well. So yeah. What's the next set of numbers, Scott? We said 80, 20, what else we got? Next set of numbers, 20 to 40 to two to four. Drop the zero. Uh, drop the zero. You just dropped the mic, I think, is what you did there. So what, I, what are you saying? So 20 to 40, we're talking hours, right? It sounds like we're talking, like this must be hours, right? This is hours. We are talking hours. So I want you to, you, this reminds me of the Chicago song, 25 or 6 to 4. I'm not going to sing it to you. I could. I don't think I've ever heard. I thought you're the meaning in my life. You're the inspiration. Is that Chicago? No. Have you never heard of 25 or six to four? Uh, I have to play that. Let me Larry, uh, are you watching? You've heard that song. <laughs> he is watching. So, by so um, 20 to 40 is like typically, I, I know what you're referencing, right? So how can we in two to four hours create the same income that somebody would work 20 to 40 hours for? Is that what we're talking about? That's that's exactly what we're talking about. So, how how amazing, can I do that? How can I do that? How can I drop the zero effectively? I you know what it just it's how can you do that? Uh, yeah. You know what? Three years ago, I never thought that I would ever be able to do something like that. But you need to take action. You need to move forward. You need to take a chance. You need to take a leap of faith with the investor toolkit or with flight school, because th just three years later, you can be doing that. Uh, yeah. You know, to, to think that three years ago, you know, if somebody would have told me that I would be bringing in more income than my physical therapist salary with just four hours a week, I would have told them they were crazy. Right. But that's what's happened. Now, did it start out that way? No. It started out with 10 to 15 hours a week. Now, I'm a coaching student of old. Three years ago, we didn't have systems. Right? Uh, so it, it, things have changed significantly. The, coach, the flight school students today and the coaching students today move more quickly. But even right. still, uh, that's what you need to do in order to get to the point where you can drop the zero. You can make as much income with two to four hours a week as you do with 20 to 40 hours a week. You know why that now people have to work less and what, what these systems do is they focus on the 20%. These systems that have been created LG Pass, the Land Geek proprietary automated software system, uh, Geek Pay, these systems, they 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 take that twenty percent and they just they just just crank it. They make it work that twenty percent at a high level, so the results come. That I means so you're absolutely right though. This is not some. This, this is a very unique niche. It's a very small niche. This is where you're basically at the beginning of it. Like this is software that was created over the last few years that didn't exist. It did not exist, and this is something that can scale your business exponentially it could take you and your team and and then again that's how you drop the zero too land investing as scott's in the beginning is a team sport so you you automate you delegate you take these things off your plate so you can mail out three thousand four thousand five thousand offers boom they go out and um you know like conway's talking about sending out two thousand offers well it's kind of it's a, it's a massive action i love it in the beginning it, you got to be careful. You don't want to overwhelm yourself, right? Because what's going to happen is three or five percent of those people are going to contact you back. If you have the time and you're ready, perfect. You're good to go. Uh, other than that, you may be bogged down with phone calls and intake. 
So we always recommend starting at a micro level. What's that mean? 100 mailings a week, a uh, few hundred mailings a week. That way you get a deal flow coming. You can deal with it. You can learn the process and you begin to delegate that to somebody else. And once somebody else takes the intake off your plate, you can mail at a super high level. So it's a gradual process. And we always say land investing is like a marathon, but the only difference is that the last few miles are quicker than your first, right? Because you're getting more effective and efficient. Any other questions in the group? Yeah, we do have a question from Carl Webb. Carl. Carl Webb. Carl Webb is doing well. Cheers to you, Carl. He said, how much cash did you guys start with to invest? I'm buying property right now, but haven't really mastered the marketing piece yet. I'm wondering if wholesaling is a good strategy to start with to build up cash reserves before trying to get retail sales. Nice. What was the percentage of wholesale versus retail sales in your business starting out? Yeah, I started in, first of all, I started negative. I had 40 grand debt. We've all talked, I've probably talked about that story. I don't want to blow that out there again. I've, a, I've talked about it a lot, but I was negative. I didn't have any money, which was kind of weird. It was like my buddy, Jeff, was uh, who had met Mark and was blown away. And Mark uh, took Jeff's business and just, just propelled it forward at an expen exponential rate. I was like, you've got to meet this Mark Podolsky guy. I'm like, I I'm going to invest money. I'm 40 grand in debt. He's like, no, seriously, come to Arizona and meet him. And I did. And I'm telling you, that, that first year I paid that debt off because I bought land. I bought it cheap, four or $500. I doubled my money. Now, that wasn't quite wholesale. Some of it was, but it was just I bought land so cheap that I could quickly sell it at, uh, you know, you, you can sell someone a piece of land for under $1,000. It's going to move quickly. Wholesale, it's a great avenue. The secret to wholesale, buy cheap, right? What's that mean? Mail a lot of letters, be aggressive, and, uh, and there it is. You know, make lowball offers, and then when you buy the land, you have enough room to double, triple your money and allow the next investor to, to make four or 500%. So um, that, that call is a great idea. I like it. I, I embrace it. I think you should embrace it. And if you want to talk about it in depth, call me. <laughs> Carl, that, that is, that is an awesome, uh, that is an awesome philosophy for, for starting out in your first year or two of this business, uh, to, to purchase, to purchase, uh, a parcel of land and sell it for less than market value. You will move it more quickly. Money loves speed. And that's how I got through my first year in this business. We did a lot of cash deals, uh, you know, buy, buy for a thousand and sell for 3000 when the market value is 5,000, those lots sell quickly and they really, it really helps move the needle. Now, you know, for the first 15 months, I did more cash deals than terms deals at 15 months. I decided, Hey, Let's flip it around. Let's do more terms deals than cash deals. And that's where we really built our passive income. So I, I think that's a great, I think that's a great philosophy to start with. Um, and uh, I think Carl, you'll do well if you start out that way. Um, yeah, definitely. All right. So, Hey, any other questions in there? I think we need, I think we need a segment because I'm, I'm empty. Okay. Are you empty? Yes. You look sleepy over there. No, I just look at. <laughs> Does anybody else think Mike looks sleepy? I usually uh, have my webcam. I'm on my I'm on my laptop, so it's giving me a bad angle. Okay, right, the camera's right. not not doing me any justice tonight. Uh huh. Yeah. Any other questions from the community? Please let us know. Uh, but we're gonna stop here for a minute. We're gonna have a refill. <laughs> What is that? What is what? What are you drinking? It's Maker's Mark. Well, that's the biggest bottle. Of, I mean, it's the angle. This is the biggest bottle of Maker's Mark I've ever seen. <laughs> it's the angle. I got some Basil <laughs> Hayden right here. So uh, Matt Forbes can't be. Throws on me. Well. Scott's trying to say that Matt Forbes can't be with us unless you can hear him because I can't. Let's see what happens here. Cheers to the refill segment. Let me see if he's still live here. Hold on one second, folks. Refill your drinks. We'll just a momentary pause. 
<laughs> yeah, I just confirmed that Scott is frozen and I am live. What that means is I have the show completely to myself. So uh, cheers to everybody. We do have one more set of numbers to talk about as well. Um, but we'll see if Scott logs back on and we'll go from there. So basically, let me see if I can log on and see if there's any questions to the community. Hold on a second. Typically, Scott handles that. Let me take a peek. Aaron, oh, there it is. Scott Boston wrote, hold on. Aaron Williams, cheers. Chris Grassman, ha! Oh, that sounds good. So to recap, tonight we've talked about a couple of sets of numbers. The first one being uh, Pareto's Law, 80-20, and then also drop the zero, which I love. How do you go from working 20 to 40 hours to working two to four? Uh, really, the secret there is you learn the process, then you automate and you delegate. But you have to go through the process of learning first, right? You have to learn how this business model works, uh, how we do what we do, get the, get the fundamentals down. And the good news is there's only a few things you have to do every day. There's only a few things that have to happen every day. Uh, and when you do them consistently, the needle moves forward. And then you can, at that point, outsource them to somebody else and, uh, and you're good to go. Scott Gosman, Scott Boston says, power went out. Wow. Okay, Noah, I love it. I got a question here. What one change made the biggest difference for your business in the first year? That's a good question, Noah. You know what? If I think back to my first year, one of the first things that really kind of held me up was, was sending out my mailings. In fact, offer prices. To me, that was something that really kind of, I just couldn't understand really. I, I knew the dynamics of it, the fundamentals, but really what happened was I realized that was fuzzy math. And Scott taught that done is better than perfect, meaning just take action and recover. So I thought that my offer prices had to be spot on perfect. And if they weren't spot on perfect, that, uh, you know, I was going to waste my money. And, uh, and really that whole over thinking, you know, it just paralyzed me. The reality was it's a quick thinking process. It's fuzzy math. You make your offers the best you can based on the information you have. When someone calls back and answers you and says, hey, I'd like to sell you my land, that's when the due diligence begins in earnest. That's when you can actually um, begin to um, you know, look at the property in depth and make sure that you made the right offer price. And it's so easy. If somebody says, hey, thank you for offering $1,000 for my property and, and uh at that point, you, you look at the property and you're like, wow, I really can't offer them more than 600. Truth and honesty rule the day every day. I would tell them, hey, I'm sorry, um, I did offer you $1,000, but you know, in, in light of new information I've received or recent purchases, I can only offer you X amount of dollars. And these people, most likely, if they're motivated to sell 1000 they'll sell 600 or you'll meet them somewhere in the middle. So um, honestly, I think that was probably one of the biggest things that I had to kind of get around. And once I did, it made a huge difference. It's a great question. Any other questions out there? Scott should be logging on soon. I guess in Wisconsin, <laughs> he lost power. It doesn't happen out here in Boston. I don't know what he, what's going on. So the last, I'm going to bring up the last. Uh, oh, here he is. Scott, you're back. Scott, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I was going on and on. I had the whole show to myself. I was like, whoa, big moment, big break, big my big break. I was all by myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how embarrassing. The lights went out here. The power went out. Well, you are in Wisconsin. We're having a big thunderstorm right now. We better so get that's... to the last of the numbers. Let's do it. What's the last set? We did 80, 20. We did two to four, 20 to 40. What's the last set? What do we got? We're doing 300 to 1,000. 300? You're a land snob. I'm a land snob. Here's what it is, folks. You know, we, in this business, our returns are so out of, you know, off the charts that a lot of times uh, people will say, hey, I bought something, I only doubled my money. Like, as if that's a bad thing, right? So we typically... Cash sales usually are about 300% return. Term sales can go up to 1,000. But 
I don't think anybody has a problem with doubling their money on an investment. So, yeah, I'm joking. I'm calling Scott a land snob because he's saying the typical 300. But if I can buy something right now for a thousand and sell for two thousand, I'm doing it. I'm doubling my money. I'm out, right? So we don't want we we don't want any land snobs, Scott. That's what I meant. Sorry. No, I I mean I'm not a land snob. Never. I didn't mean you in particular. I was just kind of using you as an example. Okay, I gotcha. You and your right. mock. Okay, here I'm. I'm checking the. Uh, are you watching the comments now? I looked at a few. I think they said, "Run solo, run, run." <laughs> <laughs> uh, how embarrassing that my uh, that my power went out. Aaron Aaron Williams says a cheese rolled off a truck and hit a pole. <laughs> yeah. so I, I did. I did log on and answer Noah's question too, though, because that was a great. Do you have anything for your? I mean, I'm not going to tell you what I said, but. What's one change that you made the biggest difference that made the biggest difference for your business in the first year? Any any initial what's your thoughts on that? I had a I had an example for me, but what about for you? Any big change what in the first year, Scott, something that you implemented, some change you embraced that made your business that much better? Okay, so uh, when I first started with one on one coaching, I did not have LG Pass. Oh. So a f- a few months into my coaching, I got access to that and that changed my life because I went from uh, spending hours and hours and hours on a mailing list to spending one hour on a mailing list, minutes on a mailing list. That was huge for me. So uh, that occurred partway through my coaching, uh, which was was just phenomenal. So, uh, I would have to say that that was, that for me was the biggest thing that occurred my first year of doing the business. And to know that that, to know that that tool is now, uh, an option for everybody getting into this business. I can't stress it enough how much time it saves you. Your time is worth something. Your time is money. It saves you money. Yeah, no, very, very good point. So 200 or 300 to 1,000, that's the returns that we realize on our investments. Uh, you know, a lot of times people who aren't familiar with our model think, yeah, right, no way you're making that kind of return. But honestly, we make a lot of offers. We buy our land, um, 25 cents on the dollar. You, I always tell people, you need to be super excited when you make a land purchase. You need to know, like, wow, this is, incredible right you, you don't want to have a scott talk calls it i gotta have landitis you want to make sure you're buying something where you're completely motivated super excited and uh, that's why the returns come the way they do yeah that's a, that's exactly right so i mean oh oh, oh look at that, wow, look at that. Two, of you. two of me. but now you got an oh, echo uh, i gotta mute one of you can you hear me okay yeah i muted the other scott boston yeah, I'm gonna get rid of him. Scott, what's um what segment we have left? We're running out of time here. What do we got for segments? Hold on, I'm trying to get rid of the other. I'll stuff. remove that. I'll remove them. Okay, I got him. Okay. What do we got for a segment? We got. Let's see. Oh, we got the Boston Lega segment. Oh man, what's that one? Tell people who don't know what that is. All it's right. So hold on. Let me grab my little uh, high-tech CG, CGI sheet. This is the Boston Lega segment of Nightcap with the Land Geek guys. This is where it's also known as uh, what the bleep are you saying, Mike Zeno segment. Well, that's true. Scott and I use Voxer, V-O-X-E-R, to communicate. In fact, that's how my wife and I communicate with our land team. So. You guys, anybody who's uh, has never used that, look into it. But many a time, I'll box with Scott, and he will say, "How'd you just say?" I don't know what you said. <laughs> like I'm speaking a foreign language. Now I don't understand why he can't understand me. But anyway, so I speak clear English. Cr- clear English. I created this segment a few weeks ago. In this segment, the community will learn a new Bostonian word, either a word that is commonly mispronounced by Bostonites or a slang word that none of us will understand. 
you mean mispronounced by the rest of the country, but go ahead. Right, yeah. So it works like this. I'm going to spell a word or a group of words, and you are going to repeat that word back to me. Sounds easy. All right. Are you ready? I'll try my best. Let okay, me get here some basil hayden in me. A, this is a pretty common one tonight. I, I, I didn't have a lot of time to think something up, but. Oh, uh, boy. You ready? Here we go. I'm S ready. S H A R P. Shop? Shop. Shop. Yeah. What would you call it? Uh, first of all, I would spell shop S H O P. Shop. That's shop. Yeah. Not that shop. Yeah, I, I would. Completely different words. Completely different words. Shop but I would, shop. I would pronounce uh, S H A R P sharp. I would say you pronounce it wrong. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Shop cheese. Excellent. That was an Excellent. awesome segment. Shop. <laughs> Let's look at. We'll see if we get any right. final questions here. Now, um, I'm. I did. I did. I did log in because uh, yes, Carl, that's boxer, V O X E R, not boxer. No, although not boxer, I love boxing. Not Joe boxer, love no. boxer, but it's boxer. Um, but it's a great app. It actually anybody familiar with the old Nextel? Remember, click, click. Hey, how you doing? That's kind of like how boxer works. Yeah, kinda. You're right. Kinda. It's a walkie-talkie app. It's pretty awesome. Um. All right, let's see who uh, Aaron Williams loves that segment. By the way, uh, here we go. Good. We have a we do have we do have a question. Uh, let's see. Ron, you hear an echo? Ronald Haynes, do I hear an echo? Yeah, I don't anymore. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Ron says, Ron, I think you might have been on our webinar tonight, uh, which is cool. What would be a good test to find out if this bit Sorry, if this business is a good fit for you. Right, right. Well, you know, like anything else in life, you got to give it a fair shot, right? And uh, first thing I think that people come to this model, they have to go through their own due diligence, right? In investigating uh, what we do and how we do it. So you want to understand the model, first and foremost. Like, how does it work? What do we do? And educate yourself. Listen, there's a ton of information out there. Information, you can get enough informa information, as Mark says. There's plenty of free information out there. The problem isn't information. It comes down to execution. But to find out if it's a fit for you, investigate. Look up the free information. Look up the different, uh, listen to our podcast. The things that we, we talk, we have a number. The, the roundtable, uh, we have uh, the, this nightcap here. Uh, we, Mark has the out of passive income. You listen to all these and you can hear uh, some stories of people doing the business and, and their experiences. And that's going to let you know whether or not you think you'd like to do that as well. And then you step up to the plate and you swing, you swing hard, you swing for the bleaches and you do it right. You really give it a fair shot. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot to do in this business, right? The mailings um, and get out there and get rolling with the business model. So first and foremost, educate yourself on what we do and see if it speaks to you. If it speaks to you, the next big question becomes, how do you get involved? Toolkit flight school, you know, toolkit for those who kind of like, eh, let me see if this is real. I'll try on my own. Flight school people say, hey, yeah, this is real. I understand this is a real model. I want to get up and running quickly. Boom, I'm going to go to flight school. So that's the progression. Embrace it and go for it. And and Ron, here's the truth of it. Uh, I, I don't have any background in business, marketing, sales, real estate. It just, it's a passive income model that works. And right. three years ago, I'm a very logical thinker. I heard, I, I, I heard Mark Podolsky describe the model and I thought that sounds amazing. No tenants, no termites, no toilets, no renters, no renovations. No, I mean, it's just, it's, it's crazy to think that you can bring in passive income uh, with, with, out a lot of hassle without a lot of stress. It makes a lot of sense. It, once you learn how to do it, uh, it actually is not that difficult and uh, it's powerful. So um, I would, like Mike said, I would encourage you to explore the content 
there's a, you know, that's what I think sets the land geek community apart from the rest is the amount of content that, that we put out that Mark puts, puts out, uh, multiple podcasts, this goofy show, um, mastermind calls, amazing Facebook community with amazing people that help you move forward. So the community is phenomenal. Um, and, and that's the other thing, Ron is, is like, do you want to be part of a business model that works? Yes. Do you want to be part of a business model that works and also part of a community that makes you better? Yes, totally. Right. Right. Scott, since I did log in and see the comments, I have, uh, Noah, Noah, and, uh, which we've met several times at boot camp, uh, he and his wife, what time saving tool except LG pass or geek pay is the maker's mark. There you go. Of land tools as in pricey, but worth it. Now, now my answer is Noah. I know we talked about this flight school, flight school. And I don't think, you know, cost is a, is a kind of a relative factor that, you know, flight school has a cost to it, but it really represents the, uh, you could pay for that with one land deal, one or two land deals, right? And I do think it's a tool. I think it's something that's going to allow you to quickly and efficiently uh, and effectively then efficiently get rolling in this business. It's something that's going to assist you. So I stand by 100%, 110% that flight school is a tool that is meant to really scale you and your ability to make this business like crank forward. Scott? Yeah, I, I would totally agree. I mean, if I had the opportunity to do this all over again at, at the three-year mark, uh, without a doubt, without a question, without hesitation, I would choose flight school over the investor toolkit. I just did not have flight school back then. Um, I know to answer your, to, to answer your question, um, from my perspective, when I first started, other than LG Pass, the software, and other than Geek Pay, which came later in my coaching, I would say the thing that the time saving tool that changed my business the most, and it was not pricey, was using a VA to scrub my lists and to uh, generate a list for me for mailing. That was the biggest time saving tool for me when I first started out. Awesome. Jeannie wants to know how to get more aggressive with marketing. And Jeannie, can't wait to talk to you soon. Uh, and I hope to see you and Kurt in Arizona. And that's coming up. When are we going to be at boot camp, Scott? Within uh, less than We're, a month. It's like three weeks, dude. Oh Scottsdale, 120 degrees. I thought it was going to be like 60. What happened? It's 120. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, it's going to be It's going to be warm. Genie, be- aggressive in your mind. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's going to be warm. It's going to be super hot. Is what it's going to be. Wicked hot. It's going to be wicked hot. Yes, it is. Wicked but I was hot. telling Genie, aggressive in your marketing, it's a numbers game, right? So we throw out tons of ads. Some stick, some don't. But that's you know, the reality is numbers is where the mass is the action uh, component, right? So I know you and I will be speaking soon, and we're going to talk some more about that. But uh, it's just a numbers game, mailing and marketing, hitting it hard. And uh, we're going to have a power meeting in person. The three of us, Kurt, Jeannie, and Mike, that's me. Scott, you can come join us. Oh, really? That's <laughs> Seriously, you you just want to host the show with, with Kurt and Jeannie? No, no, no. This is when we meet at boot camp. I'm just saying, I mean. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, it's time. We got we to gotta wrap it up. What's up? We got any more segments? So this is it. We got to. We're going to tidy this show up. I, I think let's uh, let's wrap it up. It's been a good show. Um, we were going to go a little shorter tonight, but we ended up going longer. We had uh, we like we had hearing some, ourselves talk, I guess is what it is. Yeah, and then we had the power outage. That was not good. So, But I have a toast ready. Do you have a toast ready? No, I don't even have a bag already. Oh. Oh, that's funny. But I'm going to queue up the outro, so you go right ahead. All right. Do you have a drink? I do. Basil Over Hayden. Long Island? Kurt Morum, mm-hmm. I do not have a Long Island. Do you have a Long Island? Cause that Wait, what's be... Kurt saying? What's... i got to see this. Kurt's just he, – he, he's like, uh, are we toasting over a Long Island? I do not oh. have a Long Island. I wish I no, did. I think Kurt, Kurt, 
Kurt and Jeannie, they're talking about meeting me in Vegas. In, 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 oh, they uh, want to uh, meet uh, you. No, we've you. met. We're going to meet again. We're having a power meeting. That's what they're referencing. You missed the reference, Scott. Yeah, I, I understand what's going on. I understand you're going to have a long Kurt and Jeannie are awesome. Kurt recently I'm won. Invited, Jeannie, that's fine. I don't know if Kurt, if it was a uh, power lifting or a weight lifting, but he won a competition recently. So I want to give him a shout out. He's awesome. No kidding. Awesome. Good for you, Kurt. Yeah. Is he like one of those? Uh, is he like in those strongman competitions that we watched? Together I don't that? think. I don't. I don't think. Yeah, we were in Vegas. It was like, Kurt. When we were in Vegas. They played this. Uh, <laughs> they played this. It was probably like the 1970s, right? It was an old yeah. strongman show on loop. Like, but they kept playing it. But no, I don't think that's what Kurt did. I think he did some sort of. I don't think it was like. I think it was a traditional weight to lifting, but uh, I'm not sure 100. Yeah. percent That's awesome. Oh, we got All a right. question here. Uh, K- Katie has a quick question. I'm going to answer okay. it. I'm going to ask it. You answer it. Uh, I know you're wrapping up, but I just thought of a question. A couple of legal issues in the flight school, like how much protection you need. What if people sue you, like on the trip, if they trip on your land investing or something? If Scott covers all areas of land investing, if Scott covers all aspects of the business, so um, you will leave that with a full understanding of what you need to know relative to the business. But uh, yeah, that's an area that's definitely not something that will hold you up in this business model at all. Powerlifting, Kurt. Powerlifting. Sweet. He's a powerlifting champion. That's what I'm saying, uh, Scott. <laughs> yeah, I, I hear you. I got gotcha. you. Okay, I have a all toast. Right. Okay. I'm ready for the toast. Here's, the the friend, here's to friendship and land. May we never be without them. All right. Cheers. Cheers. Cue the cue the uh, outro. Cue the outro. Here it is. Scott, talk to you soon next week. Everybody make it to boot camp. Oh, I think it's sold out, but we'll see if we can get you in. Contact us. We got connections. Ben. I'm going to try to end the meeting. Have a good day, everybody.